Well, hey folks, research here again. Uh, we're going to take a look at some more ironclad stuff here. Now, we've already gone into incredible detail uh, about Hampton Roads and the development of the first ironclads, but what was going on elsewhere in the world? This game right here is Shogun 2 Total War, which is a, just a fantastic uh, real-time strategy game focused on Japan. This is one of the expansions. This is Fall of the Samurai that focuses on the Boshin War there in the 1860s, 1870s. Uh, that was the conflict between the Shogunate and the pro-imperial forces where various Western powers were sort of hanging out on the sidelines and, uh, and trying to manipulate things. And for that reason, ironclads are in this game. The game has a diplomacy feature where you can befriend one of the major powers, either America, uh, Great Britain, or France, and you gain certain abilities as you further your friendship with these countries, and the top end of that, the, the nicest thing you get, is access to one of those countries' ironclads. Only one, unfortunately. So, this is a custom battle where I'm loading up each of the four ironclads that the game features. It has the American USS Roanoke, the British HMS Warrior, the French Ocean, and for goodness sake, it has the Japanese Kotetsu, which I have never, ever seen in a video game before. Uh, it is a massively overlooked ship, and I'm just fascinated that not only is it in the game, it's modeled, and you can take control of it, and it's got its Gatling guns, and it's got all kinds of wacky stuff here. It's a very, very strange little ship. So this, this is short. We're just going to play a quick custom battle. I'm going to show off each of the ships that, uh, that the game has got. Shogun 2 Total War is, is getting a little old now uh, compared to the other games in the series, but I think it is one of the prettiest of all of the Total War games. My goodness, they did an amazing job on the weather, on the modeling, and, uh, and that really carried through to the ship combat. Look at these guys here, especially after that, uh, that other game, that Russian game. Uh, you know, I got to give them credit for modeling and even making an ironclad game, but you can't compete with this. Look at this. So this is the USS Roanoke. The USS Roanoke was a screw frigate, and I'm going to get into a whole bunch of detail on the Roanoke, but look at that. It's got three turrets. It was a converted ship, just like any of the other guys. Back here, we have the HMS Warrior. Just a truly massive ship. This one was custom built. This one was built from the beginning to be an ironclad. It's a 40 gun steam powered armored frigate and this ship is still around. It's a museum ship. Looks a little different now though. This is the biggest ship in this game. Over here is the French Ocean. The French had some interesting design ideas about Ironclads. They were still really into the rams. Look at that. It's got the, um, what do you call that? That's a, uh, that's a central battery ironclad, so the guns are mostly right in the middle. Uh, and then you see this, this dramatic forward swept bow here for the, uh, for the ramming stuff. That's very important. It kind of looks like a castle. It looks, it looks more like a building than a ship. And back over there, there's the Kotetsu. My goodness, the CSS Stonewall. This is a Confederate ironclad. If it looks a lot like the ocean back there, that's because it's French. The French built this. Well, a, a French company built this. It's got a ram. It's got that forward swept bow. It was considered a nearly invincible ship for its day. It's got Gatling guns there in the back, which it successfully used to fight off borders during the Ocean War. And it is, it's just such a, such a strange thing in, uh, in naval history to see. It was the only ship of its kind 
and uh, and it's just a delight to see it. And it's got this great big cannon right here in front, so it's got this forward firing gun. Here in the game, it's the longest ranged gun. Uh, I think it can fire across the entire map. So let's just move our guys around a little bit. We'll have the Europeans take the right side of the channel, and we'll have the two North American ships take the left side. Now, this game has a lot of ships. It's got some beautiful naval combat. Regrettably, the Ironclads are the slowest ships in the game, so this is going to take a little while. Uh, the wooden ships are much, much faster and just, just very beautiful. This game does a fantastic job of modeling uh, late 1800s ships and technology. Just, just very, very pretty. So we're gonna move these guys around. Oh, and look at this, we're already in range. This guy's firing their, their forward gun. So I'm gonna change the ammunition type. I'm gonna have each ship firing a different ammo type. Now, because this is a semi-realistic game, the uh, the range of the guns is pretty realistic as well. So we are already coming under fire, uh, and we can't really see where it's coming from. So late game in Shogun 2 Total War, Fall of the Samurai, involves a lot of explosions and smoke, and you really cannot see where it's coming from. So I'm sure that's authentic, but it, it's, it makes for challenging gameplay footage. Here we go, we're beginning to fire. Ocean's opening up, Warrior's opening up. Let's take a look at what we're fighting over here. It looks like they've clumped up a little bit. Might have put too many enemy ships in this level. General is under attack, There's a beautiful side wheel paddle steamer. There's another one over there with a little bit of armor. Big old steam frigates here, all chugging along. All right, so one of my ships, I think the Roanoke, is firing exploding shots. So that's why we've got lots of things just detonating around here. I'm going to see if I can get one of the boilers to explode. This game models boiler damage on enemy ships. Well, on all the ships. Uh, so you have the option of overheating your engines to gain more speed, but you have the risk of catching on fire. And then uh, if you can hit the enemy boilers with a shot, Your they will is under attack, explode sir. beautifully. So I've loaded the Kotetsu, or the Stonewall, over there with armor-piercing shot, and we're going to see if we can get one of these shells into an engine room. So it looks like the Kotetsu is pulling ahead, smallest of our ships, but the fastest. Roanoke's taking some damage here. Let's see how these guys are doing. We're close enough to open up with the Gatlings. And there goes a boiler. The Gatling gun didn't do that. One of the side guns would have penetrated the uh, the boiler there. But look at that damage. Look at that smoke. Just beautiful. The Kotetsu here has got four Gatling guns on board in addition to its actual uh, uh, main armament. So the Kotetsu was built in France under a fake name and was going to be sold to the Confederacy. Uh, that did not work out. The... Uh, uh, the U.S. Navy took possession of it and then decided to sell it to Japan because they didn't need it. They didn't want it. They had far, far better ships like the Roanoke here. The Roanoke was cut down from a steam frigate. It was a Merrimack class, so not only was it a sister ship to the Merrimack, it was actually at Hampton Roads when the Virginia showed up. It was one of the many ships that ran aground, uh, and eventually it was cut down and converted into a monitor. It was the first triple-turreted battleship in the world, and at the time that it was in service, it was, without a doubt, the most powerful ship in the U.S. Navy. It didn't perform terribly well, though. The uh, It didn't do much during the war, uh, during the Civil War. And afterwards, uh, it turned out that it just really did not perform very well in the uh, in the ocean. So how it got from the east coast of America over to Japan, I have no idea. Now here we go, we're gonna ram. This guy has the ramming ability. In we go, there's our ram. 
and the Kutetsu, or Stonewall, usually fires that forward gun right after a ram to sort of dislodge. So here comes the Roanoke, just slowly chugging its way in. There's the ocean blasting away in there. There were three ocean-class ironclads. Like I said, central battery ironclads, all the armament right there amidships. Uh, casemate guns in there, you didn't see that sort of thing very much uh, until sometime later. Also a ram, so we're going to get these guys right in the side right there. In this game, ramming is an, basically an instant kill. Already we can see on the tooltip they are sinking. And let's take a look at the ship that we rammed before. It's already gone. The one that the Kotetsu rammed earlier has already sunk to the bottom. There goes a wooden Excellent steam frigate. Sir, the enemy general has fallen. He's probably on that one right there. Blasting away. Let's see if we can get him with the Gatling gun. Looks like the Kotetsu's lost a couple of guns. These guys are running for it. Looks like uh, looks like our ocean has kind of run up into the edge. I left the warrior away at the edge of the map because it's it's completely overpowered in this game. If you manage to get the warrior, you win everything. Oh, and we missed. Dang it. All right, well, let's get him with the Gatlin. Okay, they're going down. Guys jumping overboard. There's the warrior way the hell back there. HMS Warrior was a hell of a ship as well. 40 gun, steam powered armor frigate, armored frigate, excuse me. First armor plated iron hulled warship. And uh, uh, and was it was mainly built in response to the uh, the French earlier ironclad, the Gloire, or the Glory. Uh, really incredibly powerful ship, but just one of those uh, one of those situations where it became obsolete almost as soon as it uh, hit the uh, hit the ground, so to speak. There, so there she is. You can really see the the lines, the influence of the earlier sailing ships. Uh, where the uh, where the ironclads from other nations uh, were completely revolutionary designs. There's the Kotetsu there, doing its thing. Just raking the deck of that Conrean Maru over there. There's our ocean. Just a dreadful looking thing. The uh, I always liked the French ironclads. They were they were just unapologetically ugly. They were they were incredibly focused on being effective. Uh, and I feel like uh, Hayao Miyazaki, the uh, the guy who did uh, Howl's Moving Castle and, and some of those other excellent animated films, uh, he, he had a soft spot for mechanics as well. He's got ironclads and airplanes and a few of his ships, and they, they look very French to me, uh, though I think I've read that they're actually based on the Russian ironclads. So there's a level with some beautiful ironclad combat. No need to belabor the point. I like ironclads. I appreciate what they mean for naval history. So that's enough of the ironclads. And next time we're going to focus on some more relevant parts of the Civil War. So thanks for playing along, and I'll see you in the next level.